So in this video, I'll review five common risk factors that can increase the odds of someone developing a physical limitation. Hi, I'm Dr. Edmund Kleeman. I'm an orthopedic surgeon here in New York. I specialize in sports medicine and arthroscopic surgery. The prevalence of developing some physical limitation is correlated with increasing age. For example, those people in their 60s, about 25% of them, will develop some physical limitation with regard to walking a quarter of a mile or carrying a 10-pound bag. But this jumps to about 45% in people who are 80 and older. Additionally, about 70% of people who are over 75 have some problem with balance, and about 50% of people over the age of 75 require the use of a handrail when going upstairs, whereas those people who are under 40, that is rarely needed. There are several risk factors that can sway the odds of someone developing a physical limitation. And for many older people, they don't have a lot of physical reserve and they are living close to a threshold. So any small hit to the system can really increase their risk of developing a physical or functional deficit. Therefore, it's important for us to recognize these risk factors, try to navigate around them for us to try to avoid or at least mitigate the risk of developing a physical limitation. The first risk factor I want to discuss is sedentary behavior. That's sitting for many hours uninterrupted, either let's say at a desk, on your computer, or even on a couch reading a book for many hours uninterrupted. These type of activities or sedentary behavior in general is associated with reduced physical function. There are two aspects of sedentary behavior I want to touch upon. One is substitution and the other is taking breaks. So we know that sitting for extended periods of time is not healthy. If we can break it up, say every 20 minutes with about a two to three minute break, which can be either walking around or if you're feeling a little like you want to challenge yourself, it could be doing more vigorous activity like maybe air squats or leg raises. Anything of this nature will help break up this sedentary behavior has been shown to be important to reduce the risk in older people of developing functional limitations. The next concept I want to talk about is substitution. If we can substitute some light activity instead of just sedentary behavior, that can make a big difference. And this requires maybe setting some new habits. For example, maybe after dinner, you're always sitting for three or four hours watching TV on the couch, well, maybe set a new habit where right after dinner you take a half hour walk. And interestingly, there are studies that have been done that have looked at substitution. And there's one study of approximately 100 people, average age of 71, and they found that if they substituted one hour a day of light activity like walking around for a sedentary behavior like sitting, they can reduce the risk of developing a physical limitation by almost 80%. The second risk factor I want to discuss is physical activity or physical inactivity. And here again, those people who are not physically active are at a much higher risk of losing their functional ability. And for example, there's a study of patients who are over 75, and they found that those people who are not walking at least a mile a day have about 1.5 times higher risk of developing a functional deficit compared to those people who walk at least a mile a day. Additionally, in older people, if let's say they were active, but as they're getting older, they start reducing their activity level, they're at almost double the risk of developing a functional decline. And finally, for those people who are over 70 and are completely physically inactive, they have a five-fold risk of developing a functional deficit compared to those people in that age group who are physically active. The third risk factor is smoking, and there was a study of about 7,000 older people over the age of 65, and they found that those people who smoke have about a 20 to 30 percent higher risk of developing a loss of mobility, ability to walk and move around, compared to non-smokers. And this is probably because smoking affects so many different organ systems, like the cardiovascular system and the lungs. The fourth risk factor is obesity. And so in the U.S., something about 70% of people over the age of 60 are overweight, and about 30% are actually obese. In a study of several thousand men and women over the age of 65, found that those people who are in the 80th percentile of BMI, so people who are obese, 
have a 20 to 40% higher risk of losing some mobility compared to those people who are in a more normal range of BMI. Another study of about 1,000 older women who were obese found that they had a 40 to 80% higher risk of developing a functional limitation compared to those who were not obese. And for those women who were both obese and were physically weak or had less muscle mass, they were at a two to two and a half higher risk of developing difficulty using stairs. Some of the potential reasons that obesity can affect physical function could be that the weight can put too much stress on joints, particularly older people who have arthritic joints, making it more difficult to move around. Obesity can put more stress on the cardiovascular system. So these are some potential reasons why obesity can cause some mobility dysfunction and just regular physical dysfunction. The fifth risk factor is having chronic medical conditions. So as people get older, it's very common for them to develop medical problems. And studies have found that 80% of people who are older will have at least one chronic medical condition, and something like 70% will have at least two. And these could be things like cardiovascular disease, it could be arthritis. And there was a study of about 5,000 to 6,000 people who are over the age of 60, and they found that those people who did not have a chronic medical condition, about 10% of them had some mobility dysfunction. But that number jumped to about 50% for those people who had multiple chronic medical conditions. Let's wrap up this video and go over a few key points. Number one, the risk of developing a physical limitation is associated with increasing age. The second thing we talked about were five common risk factors for developing a physical limitation, including sedentary behavior, physical inactivity, smoking, obesity, and multiple chronic conditions. And the third and final thing that we want to talk about was changing habits. And so incorporating new good habits like taking a walk, being physically active, and trying to reduce some of the unhealthy habits like smoking and poor nutrition will all help prevent physical limitations from occurring in the future. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please click the like button below and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you in my next video or in my office.